Carrera, everyone, and welcome. Love is in the air, but you want to know what else is in the air? Maybe some upsets. Hello and welcome to day two of the lock-in. And we're coming at you live from the Genacio de Ibra Puera. I've got that right, I think so, in <laughs> Sao Paulo, Brazil. Of course, I'm Golden Boy here, spending my Valentine's Day in the most romantic way possible, sandwiched between two British men. Does a People that would pay a lot of money for that. <laughs> people would pay a lot of money yeah. for that on Valentine's Day, yeah. and you've got it for free. Yeah. I, Isn't that lovely? I can only be so lucky. <laughs> anyway, so, of course, I'm joined by Sideshow and Brand. It's a pleasure to have both of you here today. And yesterday, we actually kicked off this 32-team single elimination event with two great matches. First, it was NRG versus Koi. And, you know, I think going into this, we all kind of just felt like this was going to be... Uh, this had a potential to be a banger, but I was very shocked to see NRG dig deep the way they did. Yeah, I mean, I think they had a, another classic NRG slow start in the first half, <laughs> and then they warmed up. They showcased why being a pre-existing team with all of that synergy is going to get you deeper in a tournament like this. Yeah. And I don't think it was because Koi, you know, played badly at all. They just are a newer team. Yeah, I thought the match overall was actually quite good, but the uh, second match of the day was a bit more one-sided, wasn't it? A bit of a beatdown by the Giants players onto uh, Detonation. I uh, hope that they're going to be able to get, you know, some worth out of being in Brazil, maybe some scrim time as yeah, well at definitely. the end of this, because, yeah. you know, a reminder, the stakes have never been higher with a tournament at the beginning of it as well, especially, you know, we had, the, you know, the planners to get 32 of these teams in this tournament playing in a single elimination. And so from the get-go, you know, we got to fill just, in some more colors. Yeah, <laughs> we did. You know, it's going to progress. The dartboard's looking great, of course. Uh, but the, here is the alpha bracket and, of course, the matches that we have coming up today. Now, we have FPX versus Carmine Corp. And then it's going to be BBL against DRX. And it'll be Cloud9 versus Paper X. Some pretty great matches today, Sideshow. Yeah, I would say actually as well that when you look at the games that happened yesterday, you said on your intro that, you know, that maybe there's an upset in the air. Well, I'm looking at the games today, and I think that there is a serious, like, massive upset yeah. potential, or more so, could be the biggest upset that is possible. Absolutely. I think we've got an upset alert on our hands here, GP. Now, you listen, you don't know anything about this. We've decided to this? hijack the run of show okay. and just insert these at moments of the day upset alert for this particular match here as well. I mean, I think today, honestly, th the fact that the matches okay. went kind of the expected way yesterday is not going to be a recurring theme, I imagine, over no. the course of it. There's no way. It's a single elimination tournament. You can have upsets all over yeah. the place. And the, the match that I wanted to look at was DRX BBL, because I feel like if that one did go the opposite way, yeah. then people would be losing their minds. Can I Can I just ask, uh, who asked for those graphics? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just Don't keep rolling with the show. Yeah, just yeah, keep yeah, rolling just with the show. Be right. a professional. Be a professional. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this BBL squad, honestly, there is a real heavy hitters, I think, across the board. I mean, when you think of Turkish Valorant as well, they have individual talent just completely stacked across the board. And it really manifests, I think, in a player like Kushino, because this yeah. guy is just the definition of a star player. But the reason that I'm bringing this up as well as an upset alert is because they, they did a poll previously, and there was something like only 3% of the yeah. viewers were expecting BBL to win this game. Wow. They have more than a 3% chance. Upsets are not, you know, the, no team can ever be 100% in there. And when you're playing against players like Kushner and Brave and Turco on the other side of things, players that can really do something, you've got to respect the potential for an upset, for a major upset like that. All right, well, you know, I, look, I, I appreciate that you two are, are, are just trying to, you know, create suspense for the pre-show. <laughs> yeah. But, you, guys, we have a really big match coming up. It's going to be C9 versus Paper X. And, and, and surely there's an upset alert for that, right? Well, I'm glad you asked, Golden Boy, because actually, as usual, you couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> um, we like to call this one the banger alert. Yeah, this is a banger alert. The absolute banger alert, giga yeah. banger. And everyone, just sound the alarms, <laughs> because there's a giga banger on our hands today. Cloud9 versus Paper X is going to be naughty. You have Leaf and sounds? Ye on one sound, uh, on one side. Stop throwing me off. And Forsaken <laughs> and Jing on the other side as well. Can you imagine a bigger clash than yeah. that between two duos on this two teams? the main teams? card of the night, I think, Holy! honestly, between these guys. Because it's incredible as well. We're getting this in the first round, this matchup yeah. as well. You've got, you know, this absolute goat in the form of Ye versus the heavy I love this. Paper X as well. <laughs> Our finalists in Copenhagen. Move aside, WrestleMania. This is the main event. <laughs> I mean, the, the Cloud9 guys did a boxing promo-like video when they first announced their yeah, team as well. You, you had Ye in the ring with Vanity. So, really, they've got more experience than Paper X, don't they? Yeah. All right, if all it, right. If it does come down to a fist ball. 
Okay. I okay. I, <laughs> fist. <laughs> a oh, fist. Oh, oh, oh. Like I was gonna say fist cuffs, but that sounds way tell too. Tell me. Pretty. Tell <laughs> me you've never gotten into a fight without telling me you've never gotten into a scrap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, though. All right. You know what, guys? With the banger alert out of the way, because honestly, this is just absurd. Let's just go ahead and get into today's poll question. Uh, what matchup are you guys? No, 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 no. Hold on, GP. What Wait a second. What the hell is because going on? It's it's a drama yeah. alert time. Okay. Listen, I know you're trying to get on with the show and everything else, but there's also a little bit of extra news as well. I was doing some investigative journalism. I was going around, and it's investigative journalism as in the standards of most esports practicing as yeah, well. Yeah. So <laughs> it was a bit hit or miss. But Eat your I will out, say, George. I managed to get a screenshot, a little, pa a little picture, I honestly, on my camera, on my camera phone, of oh, the oh. upcoming scrim from DRX. So if you what? look really closely here, you can make out the DRX, they've said that they're playing with Foxy9 in the main roster as well. This is the matchup that's going to be happening. But actually, they've been playing. Listen, enhance a bit more for me, production. Listen, go deeper here. Listen, let's get this cleared up real turn? quick. <laughs> and look at this here. This is an elite screenshot here of one of the upcoming, or one of the scrims that DRX ended up having against the Brazilian team that shows that Zest has actually been playing with them and they've been splitting that scrim time with him. Now, Stax didn't come out outright and say that, you know, Zest was never going to play. He said there was a 1% chance. <laughs> he said no. He said there was a point. 0.1% chance. A point one percent chance. Was gonna play. But this was recent in terms of scrims, and so honestly, there's pros and cons to this. You can look at this, but uh, if they're splitting practice time, it looks a bit, you know, it looks a bit awkward. You just, you just have like a conspiracy. It's it's not not a the conspiracy. off season has been so rough on you. The off season has been so rough. <laughs> You're digging through blurred screenshots to try and find out who's playing. It's good evidence. Also, that though. wasn't your hand. Your fingernails don't look that good. Well, that's insulting. <laughs> Continue with the show, host. Oh, man. Guys, you know, I really I really miss my wife. Anyway, happy <laughs> Valentine's Day, everyone. Uh, <laughs> just move on what? to today's poll question. Uh, what's got you on high alert? Is it the uh, upset of the year, the matchup of the century, or Bren's twisted mind and imagination? Make sure you scan the QR code. Cast your vote now. I didn't and, make of course, it up. We'll have the results in just a bit. I'm sure you didn't, Poppy. I'm sure you it's didn't true. make it up. I'm sure. You gotta believe I'm me. Sure. I didn't make it up. You gotta believe me. <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break, but when we return, we're gonna dive deep, probably deeper than Bren went in for those pictures for today's match on FPX and Carmine Corp. That's gonna be coming up. And as always, folks, you already know what I'm gonna say. See you on the other side. Welcome back to day two of the lock-in. Now let's talk about our first match. It's gonna be between FPX and Carmine Corp. And I'm so excited about this one because I get to see my boy Angel calling the shots. Whoa, Artists whoa, whoa, whoa. on the, I mean, hold listen. on, wait a minute. I'm actually being told that I'm old. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and that, you that are. I'm being told that I'm old and confused uh -huh. and that apparently FPX is an all-Chinese roster now. What's going on? Completely different team now, GB. Completely different team as well. And the starting roster, they are currently the head honchos when it comes to China in their own region. And there's some heavy hitters in this in this team as well. If you're looking at one individual as well, Yukoi likes to be known as YU in the, in the scene as well, has been honestly making great strides for them. But they have overtaken Edward Gaming, which everybody remembers from Champs, as that number one Chinese team. Yeah, and that's why you need to keep your eyes on these guys. I'd say that they're still the underdogs in this match overall, but with China just starting to blossom as a region, there's still a lot of excitement and hype around whether or not they yeah. can deliver some level of upset result here. Yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to see how this FPX team, you know, tackles a, a, a very prepared and game Carmine Court, but also how they try and implement a little bit of their uniqueness on the stage, mm -hmm. right? Oh, how they, do got, they, they got oh, it's going to be unique, man. They got unique. Yes. And, and, I, and I'm looking forward it's gonna to it. It's going to be unique. I really am. And of course, you know, the two players to watch out for on this one are, uh, I think, you know, Berlin and, and Ayun are mm -hmm. certainly going to be players that we're going to have to keep our eyes on as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're the initiator players for FBX itself as well, which usually puts them in the position to really set up their team to succeed. And, uh, you know, when we think of Edward Gaming, the, the former top team out of China, where they're so heavy hitters based on their duelist play and their raw individual skill. Uh, FPX tries to drift more into that team play element as yeah, well. They, they try do. to copy they the do. compositions as well from other regions. And, and I think the reason that Berlin is so important to highlight is because he's the IGL for the team, the team captain, and he plays such a high risk, high reward style. If yeah. you're looking for a player to zone in on where you're going to see crazy highlights, but also some... Uh, absurd decisions yeah. happening as well. <laughs> Take a look at the captain Berlin. And that kind of trickles down into the whole team. For Ayung too, he's got the quality to be a star player, but he ends up playing a lot of the initiator stuff. So again, that naturally lends him to be much more aggressive than you'd expect yes. from other guys that tend to set up the rest of their team. It's going to be chaotic, and that's going to be a challenge for somebody like Scream on the other side, IGLing, to deal yeah. with. Yeah. Ayung Ay plays initiator like his team forced him off of Duelist. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, oh, you already like, had like everyone in rank. Listen, the jet, the <laughs> yeah. rain of the chamber already got locked yeah. in. He's like, ah, oh, I guess I'll play Sky then. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I guess I'll play Sky. If I must. Yeah. All right, well, Look, guys, we're, we're getting an entirely new FPX roster in 2023. I'm excited about it, so let's go ahead, take a moment, and meet the team. Hello, I'm Berlin from the FPX from Plus Phoenix. Now I'm playing as Xian Feng Wei. I'm happy to meet you all. Hello, everyone. I'm Ay Ayang. I'm from the Chinese Fan Plus Club. I think our team is very good. 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 与前二队伍有非常大的区别。我们每个体系都是双烟，然后没有血肉子，几几乎都是。还有我们的烟角是雨辰，还有 T Z H。啊，我们队伍里有阿阳，他也是负责先锋位的。然后还有我们的突破手是 Y U， 然后他也很常玩守卫。Burning 他是指挥，他在队伍中就是经常补位。我这次比赛比较关注的队伍有两支吧。一个是 C 9一个是 s e n t i n e r s 至于选手的话，我觉得 h e n s 还有 Ye， 我非常想对上他们俩，毕竟大家都知道他们的强度在哪，想要尝试看看。我并不会感到太多的压力，还有啊负担去面对这个比赛，我会抱着一个来学习的心态去偷学一些东西，然后让之后的比赛打得越来越好，然后让世界看到我。你已经准备好跟我们比赛了吗？And I think for a, a lot of these teams that are coming, especially for our Chinese teams coming in, right, it's a great opportunity for them to mix it up with some of the best in the world, yeah. you know, like legends in the scene as well. I mean, those yeah. guys are going to take the stage against Scream. Yeah, and actually, Yinsu was talking to some of the players from China too, and they were really excited to be playing against Scream. Scream's a, a legend yeah. in that space. They really highly respect him, and I think that they'll get a lot out of just playing against him from almost like a, a fan experience as well as a playing yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's really, it's really strange when you are in that position where you're playing against your idols. You realize in that moment that I'm on that level, or at least yeah. I could be on that level if we're able to get over the line and beat them or yeah. make it close. And one of the best things, honestly, that they can get out of this is that 
LAN experience, I think, at the global for events. Sure, for because sure. it's a thing that's been missing from the Chinese circuit as much. You know, we had them involved in champions for 2021 or for 2022, but now moving forwards, I think FPX, listen, this is where you really start to work out what you can and can't get away with. Definitely. You know, because they're relatively untested, I would say, in their own region itself. You get away with a lot less when it comes to the global yeah. competition. Yeah, it, I'm very much excited for those FPX boys to be able to play against a legend like Scream. And actually, speaking of him, let's talk about FPX's opponents because we got an all French speaking roster with a few familiar faces that I'm sure you guys know very, very well. It's, of course, Carmine Corp. And Sideshow, the names that stand out immediately, obviously, are going to be Scream and Navira. But I'm actually really excited to see what XMS, Shin, as well as Nuzera can bring to the table here. Yeah, it, it's a roster that has been designed so that you have that veteran presence from Scream and Nivera, and then you're also able to rely on that experience to build up some of the newer players. Um, you know, XMS has been around for quite a while, but for Shin, for New Zera, they're getting their first taste of what tier one competition really looks like, but they're in pretty good hands. Yeah, and they're playing, you know, more supportive roles as well across the board. And uh, it kind of leaves that big question again about the IGLing element. Whenever we talk about Scream's teams as well yeah. and what he was doing, because it was a big problem when he was playing on Liquid. Yeah. And now you're moving into this squad, and it sounds like as well the IGL reigns are not going to be handed over to some of those younger players. It's Scream no. again who is holding the reins towards which direction and, the team's going. And that is really wild, because when yeah. you've got a player that's as talented as Scream, normally you want to take the pressure off him, yeah. have the IGL pick up you know, somewhere else on the roster, true, true. and let him go crazy, because Scream is a beast. You look at any of his stats and what he's done at previous tournaments, he tears the place up. But in terms of his IGLing, we just don't know enough yet about whether he's going to be able to get there. And it brings me back to what Rhyme actually was talking about yesterday from Giants, about this being the time to define yourself as a player. Are, are we... Now now believing that Scream is trying to identify himself, define himself as the French IGL in the scene, that is a really big pivot compared to how you would normally put Scream into his yeah. box where, as, as the superstar player from that role. I, I think especially considering the questions we had when he was in that role on Liquid as well. They were playing some unorthodox compositions, they were playing some wacky stuff. You can make an argument, honestly, now that we're exiting out of this chamber meta, that now is the time that he can really actually flex and be rewarded, I think, for playing a bit of gimmicky stuff. Are we gonna get stuff. Phoenix? I mean, the possibilities are, are there. We, are we even gonna get Scream Duelist? Because yeah. the, True. the roles aren't necessarily perfect on this team in terms of like a theoretical, yeah, just throw them all in on what they're most comfortable on. Yeah. So I think, you know, from what Scream said on his own stream that he might not be playing Duelist, I don't know. The guy loves to troll yeah, whenever you ask yeah, him. Yeah, it's subterfuge, honestly. Yeah. There's a lot of that going on before this event. But I mean, that's why we need you to do your investigative uh, journalism. I'm sorry, I'm just an esports journalist. journalist. I, 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 there's only so much I can do. There's only so much I can do. And like, we're out here expecting the big stories and it's yeah. said, you're, you're out here leaving us in the dark. But I, said, I, I did say hello to him when he was getting his makeup done. Oh, that's nice. But that was it. That was the extent. So Investigative Esports Awards Journalist of the Year, yeah. everyone. All right, well, Carmine Corp is a mix, uh, <laughs> obviously, of Valorant veterans and new faces. So, like, just like we did with FPX, let's go ahead and meet Carmine Corp. Hey guys, this is Cream, team captain for Team Kamin Corp. Hi everyone, I'm XMS, player for Kamin Corp and I'm Flex. It's gonna be my first event under this color and uh, I already enjoy it and I can't wait for the support from the fans. We had a pretty good preparation with the team, starting from scratch and this event is gonna be a good opportunity for us to, to show what we're capable of. No one knows how we're playing, I'm pretty sure we will surprise everyone. XMS is one of the players I played with before in a couple of years ago. He's very calm and he has like the experience I needed in the team. I'm a passive player and I try to join as much as I can my teammates. I try to analyze what's going on and give as much as information as I can. We have my brother, Nabil Nivera, and he's still young, you know, but uh, he's one of the best potential guys I know. The two brothers, it's special for me because I play with them on CS in two different teams. And now I'm playing with both of them. Personally, it's like a, we have a good chemistry. The two youngest players in the team, Yuzero and Shin, they come from KC before. They were in the first roster. And we decided to pick them up because of their uh, role and their personality in game. They're more like into an aggressive game style and the team fits pretty well together. It's the first time I play uh, in a French roster uh, on Valorant. 
it's way better because everything you have to say comes instantly, you don't have to think about it. The main goal for the team is to go to the VCT Champions, obviously qualifying the Masters, winning the Masters and be the best. It's been a couple of months, so we don't have much data for the teams and uh, for FPX as well, but we're going to play our own game. I think they prepared pretty well and uh, I heard they were good. We're going to be taking them very seriously and you know, just give everything we have. Even though a lot of people don't expect us going too far in the tournament, uh, we will destroy you for sure. Well, you know, I, uh, some interesting takeaways for me there was, and, and something that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily factor in, but a lot of our teams struggle with because of so many uh, players coming from different regions, it's the ability to just speak the way you want to speak naturally, mm -hmm. say what you want to say and let it flow naturally. And for an all French roster, I mean, th this is actually going to be quite helpful for them, I have to imagine, even for the players who had traditionally not been in all French rosters, Brent. Yeah, I think it's it's a big deal, honestly, when it comes to communication, you know, uh, removing a lot of the obstacles that some teams might face in terms of that communication throughout as well. But also it could just be nice, you know, culturally as well, when you're surrounded by yeah. you know, people from, you know, surrounding countries, you've got Belgian and French players, right, in this team. So it can be just good from that aspect as well. Team chemistry, a hugely important aspect of just overall teams that people often just overthink. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think though there's still so many questions about how this team is going to function, yeah. the, the roles, you yeah. know. Because we haven't they, seen they them at all, right? No, like, we haven't done seen any no. show matches, no I invitational. I was watching no. VODs from six months ago to yeah. try and watch these oh, players sick, dude. individually. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, we literally were just in the dark regarding how they're yeah. going to be playing as a team. And I feel like Scream's got a very uh, individual way of how he views this game. It's yeah. really quite unique. Yeah. And so if he's completely in charge of how the team is structured and how it runs, then I think he's going to bring something quite unique to the table in terms of how he runs. Uh, yeah, but, y you know, I, I'm very glad that you actually did mention uniqueness because while we do expect Carmine Corp to throw us some very uh, unique strategies and, and compositions potentially, roles as well, I mean, we, no one can argue, taking it back over to FPX, that when you want to talk yeah. about uniqueness, the Chinese teams definitely bring the thunder in that regard. And actually, we had an opportunity uh, to sit down with one of the FPX players because Yinsu and Achilles earlier today uh, had a conversation with Ayan and Yuchin earlier on to get their thoughts on the event. Hello everyone, I'm joined by Achilles here and we're very, very, very excited because we're going to bring you guys an interview with two of the players from FPX. It is Ayoung and Yu Chun. Uh, welcome. Now, uh, we've had an FPX and international tournament before. They were a very different FPX. You guys are kind of the new FPX. So I wanted to ask you, you know, what are some of the similarities or maybe major differences between what we can expect from you compared to the last time we saw the European players uh, take the stage? Now, uh, uh, 来到巴西啊， uh, 我们以前在这个舞台上看过一个叫 FPX 的队，但是你们现在是一个新版的 FPX， 你们跟他们在打游戏上有没有很大的区别？就我们的打法控图会给大家带来一种就是我们任何地方都想去掌控，但是呢，我们控制区域的时候会很细心、很小心，而且也有可能是假的骗子。Um, he said that uh, when it when you watch them, it looks like all they're trying to do is find space. They're just going in to look for space, but there's a method behind that madness. Everything they're doing, they, there's a system, and if they're not looking for a space, uh, they've, they've done that on, on purpose. There's a reason as to why they're not at a specific part of the map. So I think that there's a lot of depth to them that people mm. are not seeing. Uh, I, I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing it and how it's going to play out on the, the global stage. But speaking of which, this is going to be the first time that a lot of the English fans in particular are seeing you guys. This is a new exposure for them. How does it feel for you to now be, you know, in this moment, in this opportunity where you're going to be playing on this huge stage in front of a live crowd? 这个是你们第一次来到这么大的一个舞台，是出国来的。然后，呃，你们以前有没有这个呃去过比赛这么大的比赛？然后你们现在呃想的是什么？紧张吗？兴奋吗？还有在呃巴西也会有观众的，所以你们觉得那样怎么样？呃，我首先我我们俩我们整个队伍肯定是第一次来参加这场比赛，然后在此之前我们没没有过这种。来大赛经验嘛，然后还是线下赛，观众粉丝都挺多的，我们肯定很紧张嘛。然后，但是我觉得我们通过来到国外这几天的集训，然后还有我们之前的呃一些战术的讨论嘛，我觉得我们这次比赛准备的挺充足的
。呃，至于太紧张，其实也倒不会，就是很期待这次能跟 Scream 一起，<笑>呃，同台竞技，我觉得挺好的。Uh, this is the first time, obviously, they've come to a, a tournament this big. They've never sort of done anything like this before. Mm -hmm. um, at first, he said that they're a little bit nervous. They're going to be a little bit nervous, um, but it's more kind of an excitement. And now, after they've managed to come to Brazil and get some practice and from kind of the results from the past, uh, they think they're going to be able to actually put on a pretty good show. And it's going to be a bit of an honor to share a stage like this with Scream as well as their first match. Yeah. What are you? I'm nervous. 更多的是兴奋吧，因为我以前打过其他游戏的比赛，但是那时候是没有观众的。这次观众这么多，我觉得对于我更多的来说是兴奋。Uh, he's very excited. He's uh, competed in other games before, kind of in, in a big tournament, but never with a crowd. So having that crowd is going to be a really exciting for him as an opportunity. Awesome. 跟他们的评论，呃，评论像有什么？呃，你们自己有没有什么？呃，跟他们的那种呃评论？呃，首先我们肯定就是我们是一个团队嘛，我们都是非常相信我们的指挥 IGL 嘛，就是我们通过前期的运营，然后拉扯，到最后我们的 IGL 他一旦抠出他想打的一些东西的时候，我们都会很相信他，就是只要他的决策很大胆，就导致我们团队整体。打法就很大胆，所以主要就是相信队友，相信 IG 就好。Um, now, what I asked them was that obviously uh, for from the fans that haven't really seen them, it feels like their style is very like fearless. They like to go in. They like to take those fights. Uh, is that a fair kind of assessment of uh, of how they play? And his answer was, well, we're a team, and we have a hundred percent the utmost trust in our IGL. Uh, you know, throughout the rounds, we may be kind of doing our own thing, but as soon as the IGL says, okay, this is what we're doing, we have full faith. And some of those decisions that he makes can be a bit risky, can be a bit surprising, but we just go with it because we just trust him. Yeah, trust in the fearless yeah. leader. Yeah. And I hope it all works out. So uh, I'm excited to see you guys play. I think it's going to be awesome. But just as a kind of kind of final thought here, I'm going to leave the floor open to you. Is there anything that you want to say to your opponents ahead of your match? Any trash talk you want to get off your chest? Lay it on us. Uh, <laughs> Well, he said that he's going to make the Brazil fans uh, cheer for them. They're going to end up cheering for them in the arena. And I, I like this one. It's uh, Scream is going to remember my ID. He's, he's going to know who I am by the end of this. Uh, thank you very much, you two, for joining us. Thank you very much, Achilles. And thank you very much. Hey, with that kind of confidence, I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do when they take the stage. Now, earlier in the show, we asked you guys, uh, you know, what's got you on high alert, right? And the results are in, and uh, let's go ahead and see what y'all picked. And it's the matchup of the century. <laughs> Yeah. Brent's twisted mind lost. I can't. Well, I can't believe it came second. Honestly, I didn't. I didn't think I was that clouted to be able to be pulling this much, uh, this much weight in the pole. I, I really do think though the people have picked the right option because. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, maybe they did. Yeah, that is. That is me in my hotel wow. room in the mornings. You know, I get up uh. early. I put on the tin foil. Oh I start my God! Who's the ball? This was actually <laughs> Brent while he was uh, prepping yeah. for vods for this event. Yep. I run so. my simulations. I put on the tin foil hat. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, I come up with things that no one's even Wait, foreseen. Wait, did it? Hold on a second. Did it say all my co-hosts are bald? Yeah, conspiracy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Am I next? You, you should have seen what they've done to Pansy and Hypoc. They've shaved them both ready for the cast. <laughs> yeah, they really did. We all we all decided to just shave the heads off. You saw uh, Mimi and Achilles as well. Out. Yeah. You won't catch me. Hold out as long as you your hands. Get me. <laughs> all right, folks. Well, let's go ahead and wrap up this pre-show. We hope you had a good time. We have three <laughs> matches. And unfortunately, we will have three eliminations today but let's not forget 
Yay's in the building. So anything is possible. I'm looking forward to this event because I think that overall what we're going to see is high quality Valorant and most importantly, some real unique ideas take the stage. Yeah. What do you think? Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't agree more. Ca count how many shorty kills happen in this match. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. The, the Chinese teams are crazy with them. Okay. All right. Count how many shorty kills we're going to have. All right, everyone. It's time to jump into this day two of the lock-in starts right now. Everyone is excited to see two teams, unknown commodities across the board. Who knows what we're going to get in this epic matchup? And honestly, it being a, 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 an elimination game makes yeah. it even that much more tense, Josh. Yeah, it really is. And I think for the Carmen Core fans, they have such an active, engaged fan base. And this is the first time that they get to see their team. They're going to be so excited to see them on stage. And I think they are the favorites here. They're like two to one favorites in my mind yeah. over FPX just because 
of how little experience this FBX squad has on the big stage. But upsets are bound to happen at some point here. It's got to happen. I mean, with the amount of matches we've got, especially the format, it really does trend itself, I think, as well, yeah. to you know teams potentially having something cooked up, something a bit more gimmicky. And, you know, I, I don't use that in a negative term. I think it's a very valid strategy that teams could go into this tournament with. You don't have the luxury of counter shredding your opponents as much. There's not really especially any these footage. Two teams. And these two teams, yeah, they, there's a lot of unknowns going in for either side. So you can go in with your own game plan. You can cook up something a bit strange, you know, that somebody's not expecting, forcing your opponents to adapt to you. I think the only thing that we really have solid about the map select is you've got to look towards, like, FBX, right? Because they're the team that is actually a team that we've seen play before. True. And they used to always just play with that team. So that to me says common caution, have an advantage here because you know a bad map for FBX. And so you have some idea. And when you think about that from FBX's point of view, who knows what a bad map is going to be for Carmen Core? Because you've just not got no possible way of knowing. They're a brand new team. And they've only kept, you know, a duo from one team, a duo from the other, yeah. and XMS. Uh, XMS, the guy that you're seeing at the moment there, he is a player to watch as well. He's got talent. He was doing really well in the French VRLs. Makes me, you know, so excited uh, because, it, again, I, I keep saying this, I sound like a broken record, but I've just never seen this before. Uh, in, a, in a tournament of this size, this, the stakes, you know, eliminated every time. And Oh, thank the Lord. There's the ice box. So no ice, ice box, box today, gone. that's fun. Yeah, yeah, I was sick but of it. But that also leaves their Permaban Haven completely open, so they've got to have a plan. Isn't that interesting? And Scream gets rid of Ascent, which yeah. is interesting too, because that used to be one of his favorite maps. I mean, again, who knows what it is now? There's been so much time between oh, these oh, teams that we door. actually get to see. Shut the front door! We get to see the Lotus being picked. <laughs> no. And I mean, I cannot think of a more perfect time to unveil this as well. We've been talking about the unknowns, we've been talking about the uniqueness of both of these teams and the way that they play, and now we get to see it first time. <laughs> First map in this series, elimination game Bro. on Lotus. Every team has floated Lotus so far, I think. No team has first round banned it, I don't believe. And so, I don't know whether that means Carmen Core were ready to play it, or right. they are quite a new team, so they can't have had too much time in there. But this is a bonkers first couple of maps. Yeah. I don't even, I mean, the third map could be whatever. You're already gonna get insanity in the first couple. Yeah, this Pearl, is. sure, that's fine. But, I mean, <laughs> Lotus and Haven. Again, Haven, Permaban of FBX. They beat EDG on it in the finals, playing yeah. some It was, it was wild, man. The Viper comps that they were pulling out on Haven. Play Viper on Haven? Yeah, it's just absurd, honestly. But that's what I mean, these teams. And until you get tested on the global stage, it's really difficult, I think, to really just kind of like weed out what works, what yeah. doesn't in terms of those compositions. But if you're expecting me to talk about Lotus and what, on what we might see played, hmm. I mean, just good luck, because... I think it might be these comps. Yeah, well... You think it might be these comps, <laughs> team? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just like here. Let's see, and also let's see what Scream is going to lock in as well. Yeah. Yeah, this is crazy interesting. Actually, so it looks like both teams are going to be running the double controller comps. Yeah. No duelists anywhere around. I mean, I was not expecting this at all. When I was making my predictions in terms of what we might see on Lotus, Breach was the number one pick in my mind because there's just so many narrow choke points yeah, you can set up with great. your util. Yeah. It's amazing, honestly, I think, on Lotus itself. And neither of these teams have opted into it. But they're going for Sky and they're going for, you know, Sova and, uh, and Fades, respectively. Yeah. But, what, but, what do they know that we don't know? Well, Scrim, that's what they know that yeah, we yeah, don't know. Yeah. That's, that's literally the, 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 the answer there. But I'm surprised we see a mirror matchup because I feel like there's so many comps that can work on Lotus. The fact that they both landed on the same idea is crazy. All right, real quick, predictions. Who wins? Oh Brent. my god, you're gonna do this. Just say, just say, just say. Common call. Common call very closely. Okay, well, you heard from the casters or from the analysts. Thankfully, I don't have to pick. Let's send it over to your casters <laughs> for this one. And who better to bring the action than Pansy and Hypoc? Thank you. Yeah, uh, look alive, sunshine. We have Lotus coming out of the gates here. This is purely uncharted territory now. Yeah. We are. I know it was the unknown well, at the start, but now it's just spiraled. This is the crazy thing, right? Blank canvas here in Brazil. We've got yep. two unknown entities, right? If you take this at face value That's and true. then throw in the uncharted territory, there's an absolute insane opener to this series. Yeah, this is going to be wild. Let, let's start. Where do you want to start with this, Mike? Normally I give you carte blanche I mean, on this. Hey, Where do your eyes go here? I'll come back to the brief discussion we had there. The, the sure. key to Lotus in well, until we see it, right? Until we see mm -hmm. it, obviously, at this level. This play, level, yeah. The lack of a breach here is interesting, right? You could trade off fade with some of that early space sure. denial with some of the utility, but. Breach almost feels like a mainstay from what we know so far. This could I completely agree. flip the script on that. It, I'm, I'm open to it. I'm open to it. Obviously, happy to learn. There, there's a discussion to be made about the double controllers and, and how aggressively that's going to be applied, but that's definitely something I've got my eye on in the first half. 
I'm really interested to see how half of this is implemented because we have no idea really about FBX. Playing within your region, you can only really extrapolate so much from it. We need to see how it translates up against someone like Carmine Corp, who again, yes, we have a little bit more of information on. Of wow, that wipe. That's stunning. That's stunning. And this could be this year's most open heartbreak if you look at this game. There is a chance for an upset now. Now, whether or not FPX are the team to be able to pull that off is what we're here to see. Open up here with a little bit of presence shown towards B initially. A smoke invested as well. Like Scream and Shin can have their hands full if they do commit to this push. Actually, yeah. I think actually getting ping on a reveal as well there. Yeah, Berlin. We'll wander around. Let's wait and see where that first real commitment comes from. Because again, keep your eye on the. I guess the amount of attention to pushing towards these sites, they're already peeling away. So they've yeah, drawn a fair amount of utility from Sea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think Nevera almost hitting the panic button there to send the paranoia through. Mm. Shin still here. He's playing off the contact of that alarm bot. FPX have stacked up here. Ooh, the flash didn't actually connect. Yeah, no confirmation, so yeah. Actually might help them out, keeping more players present towards that B site. You know, still able to pull the retake. We're, we're at 45 seconds here. They need to make them a commitment, and they are. Shin going to draw first blood of the four-up as well. Stunning work already. The B site somewhat under wraps still then, but it's Carmine Corp with the shutdown right now. One player standing, and four to find, and this B site here really did not have much to it. There was not much leg to it. They were not pulling rotations, and there's a four-man firing squad. It's round one to Carmine Corp. Yeah, again, crediting the, the, the drawing out of a lot of that utility over towards C, obviously with that contact towards Mound, with the door coming through as well. Again, after that, a little late on the rotation, I've got to say, at Carmine Core after not really feeling the pinch towards Sight, have to just funnel back in all the way through Link, and like I said, actually, at that point, there was no pressure towards B to have that alarm bot was still untouched even from that early pressure shown. Shin had a couple of freebies to work with there. What it FPX looking to work the map though in the pistol. Cover, see if that does continue. And switch up here on the Viper Wall actually invested over towards A, but no nope. presence gained on the back of it. No, yeah, screen, screen gonna clear all of this, yeah, yeah and gonna find Huge. no information on the other side of it. Yeah, pretty big. Uh, again, yes, you can sit super deep towards that A side of things, but it looks like he continue he really wants to continue clearing towards this. In the meantime, we're once again seeing what looks like a B pop. Uh, maybe it should be off the back of contact, but at this point, the utility's perfect. They're not really sweating right now. Yeah, this is a brutal setup to push into as well. It's like Carmine Core are gonna rely heavily on that and alarm box. It's it's lovely. It's really well considered here by Carmine Corp. Now again, we don't know how deep this goes for them, if this is a really comfortable map, but so far. Looking quite nice, not really threatened by anything we've been seeing. I guess the early objectives for FPX is to figure out what the default Killjoy setup is of XMS. Try and deal with some of that utility. And formulate some kind of plan on the back of it. Luzera just poised ready here with the, the recon. Again, this wall. I'm gonna go up, gonna make it so difficult. Shin just getting another freebie, that spike isolated as well. Scream now. Coming Perfect. through to punish from behind. Yeah, he doesn't have to go too hard. They're, they're just being completely mullered here. This is uh, pretty brutal. Yes, if they wanted to try and swing towards the other side, you saw the KJ set up to an extent with XMS. He wasn't particularly pressured. And the shutdown should be coming in. Nice shot. Needed more, not going to get more. There we go. Clean enough for we're alive. And once again, this Viper set up towards B is fabulous. It's working well. Seen a little bit from the KJ coming in here too. Yeah, I'm curious here if on the buy round, FBX going to lean a little heavier towards A. Obviously, that switch up with the Viper in the previous. I don't know if there's going to be any progress towards Rubble. Actually, whether or not this A site is going to get tested. Nevera actually switching up, it looks like. We did see him over towards C on the pistol round, at least. My brothers in arms may be tasked with holding down the A site. It's a heavy stack, actually. Only really one member of FPX disconnected from this. Yeah, it's a good read so far. Carmine Corp as well, right place for it. For the utility scene as well, they're, they're going to be feeling quite correct in this and a little bit of a ping towards Berlin. They're going to note that too. So may kind of start strengthening or maybe exploring the other side of the map, but we'll see. We'll see what this default looks like as well from FPX, see if they take their time here too. The key thing being, XMS has actually completely switched up here. Yeah, all true. of his utilities stacked across both entrances to A site. One actually just behind the choke here in tree. That's how it lined up here and should spot the molly as well. And yeah, we'll have to see what the response is here from FPX. So that should be a big indicator that Carmine Core have completely flipped up a defensive setup for this round. 
Already though, bodies making their way towards a site. Scream ready to break the wall. That's it, Berlin. They go ahead and do it. Oh, the flash is perfect on the back of that. I but no kill though. I have no idea how Scream didn't get that. I don't know if he maybe caught. caught Berlin by. ate that flash. Yeah, it was full blind, it looked like. Bumps, that's a start. That's a freebie. But you can see the utility now into play. Exo Message is loving this, getting all that information. Yes, one has slipped towards site TZH, but gets quickly handled. You can see the trade coming out. So, currently three players. Make it just two, make it just one. Nevera last alive. Spike now down. Patience paying dividends for FPX here. Nevera only with Marshall in hand. I mean, it should be an indicator. We saw why you pick up that kill inside the poison orb. There's no real weapon for him to retrieve here. So not though he will be given a consolation. FPX should be holding on to four of these rifles here. That's a very well crafted round. And considering the uh, correct positioning, let's say, from Carmine Port, they had the, the players in the right place. They were pretty well prepared. <laughs> I thought it was FPX who were going to be on. Yeah, Nevera looking to fight fire with fire early yeah, on with the shorty. Does he get a little X? <laughs> oh, I was so close, not going to get it now, though. Actually, oh, wow. hell alive. Took one down. That's a rifle lost. Let's see. Still in with no armor either, so. A couple of repurchases required. Let's we'll see if they can spread. Oh, it's oh, way stream. Thanks for the, the replay. Headshot machine. Just not hitting. <laughs> One but so far, I mean, this is the, the, the main discussion to have around Breach is obviously the ability to deny this early space towards rubble. Actually, we see TZH actually mixing things up a little bit with a smoke to kind of deny information, maybe even to play anti flash versus scream not to get pinged out here and actually completely unconsidered. Nevera's way ahead of the smoke. Yeah, they are getting hyper aggressive on this. I want to see what they can achieve with it. And yeah, Nevera gets away with murder. Daylight robbery towards Berlin, but it is traded out. So not going to have so much of an impact beyond that, but very telling. I'm looking towards Spike still. I want to see if there is layers to this because it's already Carmine Corp exploring the rest of the map now as a reaction. So yeah, the, we'll find something here. The turret will fall as well. So Shin and Scream getting proactive just outside B here. FPX are drifting back towards the side of the map that Carmine Core still have bodies on. Mm. Yeah, I wonder how much this gets heard by Scream as well. Yeah, definitely going to hear that. And XMS is tucked in deep here. It's almost an anti-rush setup. You can see the yeah. molly being pinged out here as well. It's all on the back of contact here, but dealing with the first XMS might be in trouble here if you look at the minimap. There's no one A little isolated, yeah. Yeah, Scream can maybe make it there somewhat soon, but already seeing Nuzera holding the other side of the map. So that's a huge benefit. Now they're a little stuck and a little bit worried about that door. Just being tested, but lovely work from XMS, holding well and effective trades, leaving it in a 1v2. Mind you, this is not a comfortable scenario. Tap on the spike to draw, draw some attention, but 20 seconds is so little to play with. The double face coming out and Carmine Corp keeping it safe, but losing a couple of weapons down to two rifles here. But again, it's rounds on the board. Yeah, not much for YU to do in that situation. Another example of how much pressure this door opening at that time before FPX can even find themselves inside C site. Scream just playing a little diversion. To distract away, allow XMS to really tuck into site. But it's interesting to see here, Nivera actually punishing the placement of that wall. It makes it so difficult for anyone to really help TZH. Like I said, I kind of like that smoke on the backside of Rubble so that he can potentially play on the back of the reveal from Berlin. It does create that little pocket, as you can see here, mm. from the overhead. But yeah, Nevera not respecting that early round setup whatsoever. Nevera, yeah, this time going to do a little better than the brother. But Scream wants a little bit for himself as well. Let's see if they can keep these rifles up. Nice work. Until then, so rifle down for now. That's oh. the second loss. This is where it starts getting a little bit worrying because now you've got Shin, for example, in no man's land for a second there, and it could have been a follow-up punish. Yeah. Luckily, gets away with his life. Rifles aren't super recoverable, but they may have to give up that space and allow those rifles to fall into the hands of FPX. Is there going to try and clear through with the drone, but not really going to get much valuable information here. Yes. Yeah. Already aware of the presence and yeah. no possibility of a spam coming through. Got to be careful here. I mean, why use down to just a lick of HP here? Yeah, that's two rifles across, actually. The Bulldog now for TZH as well. Yeah, this is massive. 
And the ult maybe filtering towards the side absolutely does. Will allow maybe a cross here. Spam could be dangerous, but the turret going to clear close. I mean, they Spam. have a lockdown as well. Yeah, not finding much in this regard. I want to see what they go for here. XMS now trying to creep a little bit closer. Spam's on him, but the spike's now down. This is huge work. DZH just on the other side of this wall, but there's that lockdown coming in and the counter roll coming through as well. <laughs> XMS lucky to get that kill, though. TZH will fall. Now putting in a 2v3 for FBX, but they have to respect this lockdown. The little pocket to play inside here at drop. And it's not spammed out initially. Mm. Oh my god. The angle is so good. The angle is so good. Just on the edge of the ult. It was perfect from Yuchun. That was stunning. I mean, Carmichael almost panicking there with the yes. time that's left. Barreling back inside that Viper's bit that did overlap as well. But the investment of the lockdown really burning the clock in FBX's favor. And some beautiful openers here after. Lovely shots. Like I said, Nevera not respecting the setup in the previous here, but Carmichael just, just throwing heads on the line to try and challenge. Talking bigger picture as well, though, I don't mind if uh, Carmine Corp do want to get a little almost over aggressive stamp authority on the game, play a little bit almost not disrespectful, well, but get in their faces, be willing to take a fight. It's risky, though, with the economy being where it's at. I mean, this is what I was kind of hinting at with the lack of a reach. That space denial relies on aggression, right? Yeah. If you are going to go for that early on, think about the same discussion for Haven defense towards a lobby. It's it requires presence and quite deep presence to kind of counterbalance the, the issues with his composition. Screen looking to get a little aggro with this flash, but I'm not going to find any connection just yet. And now big trouble. <laughs> just about getting away. The scoreline could be closed up here at three apiece. And it's just a default. Very patient so far. Taking a little bit more territory towards that C side of the map. Like this, so they've got Yuchan over towards A side as well, just in case Carmine Court try and probe both extremities. Flash won't reveal anything, and I think FBX are thinking they found a little bit of space towards C, and if you look at the minimap, it's a lot of space towards C, Lauren. This is lovely. It's a gamble stack from Carmine Corp, perfectly reasonable in a round like this, maybe just off the back of limited information. And yeah, for now, you now know. Uh-oh, wrong place. But for the other side, for FBX, see if they can keep five standing. That's what we always look for, is seeing that diligence, see if they're as clear-cut as possible. For now. Right now, down on the first noted towards CT. That's Shin now seen. So difficult to get back on look this C site here. With how, yeah, with how deep this control is towards spawn. Shin and XMS going to fall off the rip. Scream desperate to try and find something. There's nothing left here. FBX going to clean this one up. Nevera will connect with the paranoia, but. Oof. Lovely. Well handled. Four will survive. Come on, Core. Can't get much done with those sheriffs. Uh, look back to this round. Oh, see, actually, if the same thing happens once again, if Carmine Core don't feel comfortable about that aggression outside A, actually C is going to be the, the solution to that. You know, see the three members across this side once again, Nevera being one of them, whether or not he's going to get aggro. Just waiting to see the investment of the Viper Wall from, mm. from Yu Chun. Might actually be towards B site. Yeah, it is. It's wide open right now. It's only the alarm bot to hold that down. They were being bullied by the Viper setup on the first couple of rounds, trying to eye up that B site, but maybe this is the time to try and readdress this. See, already the stall's in place. It would be potentially fatal to try and approach this. But certainly drawing eyes across, so let's see if there is any of that aggression going to be punished. Still have almost that mirror default over towards the A site as it stands. And the rotation towards C, noting no one close by, sending the ult and catching no one. Looks Already, like come on, Cup, sitting super deep. I'm gonna draw out the lockdown potentially. XMS thinking about it. Does he pull the trigger on it? Now? I mean, it's a massive investment, and there's no real progress onto a, another site here. So you've got to question that initially. Nevera still with very deep control here towards A. FPX looking to pop up the B site. Okay, I said this could be fatal. It's a little bit better timing now, but again, let's see what they can do. The shorty in hand, Berlin, the only one to really connect so far, and they break through towards A, but there's a pinch. Nevera right amongst them, once the right, once the left, leaves out to Nevera can't quite make the third count, but there's only one still standing. A 1v3 to boot with 30 seconds. He wants a pick so badly, and XMS, that realization hits, and he hits the brakes. They hold. They know this is a fake now. Yeah, love this discipline here from Shin and Nuzera. Can't get isolated here, but stands his ground. Nice. 
picks it up and the crazy thing to consider actually i think i just saw yu back on another lockdown which fbx are going to be happy to have that in their arsenal but yeah a little curious about the investment here towards that fake and whether or not it wasn't you know they didn't get enough pings on seaside they didn't feel confident with you know cutting the sound yeah. from two or three players but the veras done fantastic to get this deep control and maintain it bear in mind there were members of fpx lingering out outside a site you yeah. constantly looking to pressure but Credit Severa stands Vera, his yeah. ground that's a huge rep him. great point actually that discipline that ability to not over rotate over react hold that space was uh incredibly valuable four to three though quite the close game so far we'll see where this continues to tilt both sides able to fashion a purchase here see a couple of vaults available as well and again that early pressure towards c let's see if they pull a rotation i want to see what their plan is they keep in mind here, FPX, seeing what they're trying to draw reaction-wise, but a massive stack from Karma. Yeah, look at, look at B site. site. Yeah. And they're That's actually working off the back of it, too. There was consideration to commit to that. It looked as if Shin really wanted to get aggressive behind that drone. Easily here on the back of that, though. Smoke invested. Scream going to back away towards Tree. Let's have a little bit of support coming through from A-Link. Actually, now a third in the form of New Zera. They need something to pull a player uh, away. look very hesitant in some of these rounds, Lauren. I'm waiting to see if there's uh, anything else to this. Nevera's paranoia. Whoa! Just stepping into Scream and actually finds it. Now the panic stations, but look at the lurk as well. That potential is huge. That could be a dagger in the back that we've yet to see come into practice yet. So Spike going to go down, and there's four players from Carline Corp towards CT. So for now, all good though. You're going to see the Kildred carrying all the way back around. This is all towards the site. Already great trades coming in, and FPX actually holding on to this. They are not down just yet. Yeah, the lockdown's invested just as two players fall as well. So XMS and Nevera have to get something done. Berlin happy to challenge this Ooh. actually, but Nevera there to punish. Yeah, maybe a little overstep. They're trying to go towards that and a tap towards the Spike, and now starting to panic. TZH can try and get himself in shortly to hand and gets just drawn into the blender. Does a He's going to sit it out, take the damage. It's not a problem. He will be the defender on this. And that's perfect <laughs> play. I love watching this. And what a way to lock it down in the end. I love that it gets called on the desk and we're seeing Shorty plays being pulled out here the egg by is FBX. Smart. <laughs> the egg knew what was up. I love that as well, the GP in and just, just sitting on top of the friendly nano swarm yeah. as well. It's completely unconsidered. And the reduction of damage. Core. It just worked out so well, mate. I just, it's such a gutsy play, though. You just don't see that sort of thing. This is the thing though, like a minute or so into this round, you're looking at where FPX are and you're, you're thinking, mm. I mean, they've drawn out a fair bit of utility, but Carmine Course seem to have a good read on where to rotate and when. It's just on the back of a slow creep there to find that first blood where it then kind of descends into chaos, I'll be honest. Unfortunate timing there, XMS invest in the lockdown, then two players of Carmine Court fall immediately, yeah. making that a little more difficult. So Curious here, actually coming out of this timeout, if, yeah. if there is going to be a big switch up here for Carmine Core. I mean, it's 4 4. It feels like a close affair, but FBX are uh, definitely trying to Say plant it, some Mike. seeds. Say it, Mike. Uh, it's, okay, it's, it, it feels a little all over the place, I'll be honest. It, they, they've got away with a few rounds where it's kind of war firepower on the other side of that. I mean, Shin's stood his ground a number of times on B site. It doesn't necessarily feel like there's. You know, a weak point that FPX are going to be able to exploit so far, but they're no. still they're, they're scraping rounds through, so they you can't fault are. that at all. No, but it may be it, it's scrappy, right? Yeah, I, I don't think we were ever going to get a clean game out of Lotus yet, in my mind, unless someone's like just super drilled on it. But uh, as I said, it's scrappy, I, but it's not puggy. It's it, no, it's it, not puggy. It it, it all kind of looks intentional in that regard. How, it, it's bizarre to me, but it may be something to be looking at regionally if that pays off for them. Maybe a couple of teams expecting this sort of kind of a little. Uh, out their play style, but it's working well enough for now. Again, let's roll and keep in mind, Common Court picked up the pistol, so this scoreline, if you put it in context, if it keeps going this way. Big info. Big info from mm -hmm. Berlin's reveal there. XMS looking to get. He's heard so much though. Yeah. But what can you do, XMS? That's not bad! The Vera by his side! Can he get the reload in time? Oh. Yes, he can! <laughs> XMS! With his way in gold! And now leaving them in Tanner's just. TZH, the Aldron got a spot too, could not get worse here. Oh, just layering in the utility, just buying a couple more precious seconds, and now the support system's in place. But maybe overzealous in the peak there, 6 HP, it's not gonna be enough. Shin, 
shuts it down and between Navera and XMS, that was lovely. That is beautiful because with that reveal, I think it pings three and they're almost probably thinking that it's like, yeah, it's a stack. They're gonna they're gonna run this draw on the 50 round, they're gonna try and get deep control towards rubble. The XMS tucks himself in and Navera from the back lines to give him the support. The perfect timing on this swing. The fact that XMS gets the reload and finds another kill on top of that. Beautiful round from Carmine Corp. The saving grace, really, because you've got to feel like the timeout's for this round now. Back on a purchase. They got us on the Vera buy at the last second now. So <laughs> another opener here very early on. XMS has dug out the lurk here. Why you for FPX? So should actually relinquish some map control here. Got to say for me, just quietly so far, XMS has been you know the rock of this team. A couple of issues towards C early on. We've seen a lot of the attention I mean, being drawn there early. He's been solid. Yeah. Really solid. Another thing to consider as well, Shin's early dominance towards B site has kind of acted as a deterrent Here. for FPX for sure. Here. Noted at least two, potentially three players. Yeah, and they're actually going to be willing to fight on this scrappy work again. Carmine got not afraid to take a fight or two. No similarity to that prior round. Lovely shot from Berlin, but that's all it's going to be. Four alive, four rifles remain. No problems there. Carmine Corp, retake a little bit of that lead. Yep. Carve away a little bit of a Big comfort. positive to come out of that timeout and pick up the two rounds to follow. FPX back now in a position where it's pretty much everything in the bank invested into this purchase in round 11. So this isn't a win. It almost feels like it's leaning towards Carmine Corp closing this half out 8-4. Lockdown to work with for FPX. TZH with that TP. Yuchan and Berlin, one away for them ultimates, respectively. The ammo is here. Actually looking to counter off this early control outside C, just around that mound area with that one way. And bodies up behind this for FBX as well. Yuchan being pressured elsewhere. And still tucked into A lobby. Mm. Seen the Vera there on the X-ray. I imagine they're going to leave him posted up once again in this position. This feels like a must win for me. For FBX, Lauren. Let's see what they can do. There's going to be drawing out Hunter's Fury. And the old's now been removed. I want to see what response behind this. But it's still a question. Vera, huge, gets revealed, has to fall uh. with it. How is he alive? But hang on a second, because why you just lost C? the spike on C? He walked out onto site with it. Oh no. Well, this. They tried okay, to fake TP. with the TP. The TZH has got it now, but. That's actually <laughs> filth. They've got a free site. Of course, the two players were going to play around it, but the TP was still there for TZH. Spike now down. What do they have for the post plant? I mean, they've still got the Viper if they really want to mess around with it. Now, that should already be down in my eyes, but you see here, Yuchan disconnected a little bit. Yeah, I didn't loses love that. out to XMS. Did not love that. TZH now 1v2. XMS already. Newzera, a little bit of utility to play, but not a great deal. They're slowly clearing through here. See what they can find. Needs a clean fight, doesn't get a Newzera. Nice work. Come on, Corp, keep this together. But that, again, some of these rounds are just mad. I mean, I said it wasn't puggy. We're pulling out the rank strats now. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you just barreling onto site behind the lockdown that gets destroyed? I mean, it pulled the rotation. By, by so what do I, I know? I guess it kind uh, of yeah. worked. Great fake. Great fake. It's a shame they can't close that yeah. one out. TZA still had a fair bit of utility actually left, but the one thing to consider, at least getting the spike plant here, means that we're going to see a couple more rifles than maybe we were expecting. They were bankrupt in the previous, but there's gaps here. Really missing out slippery. on <laughs> Missing out on one snake bite, no poison orb here. Yeah. Two big ultimates to work with at least, and actually one away from the Seekers as well. Okay, similar scene, similar starts. We've seen this before, but a little bit more intent from FPX to at least get towards that wall prior to Navera, who's been a consistent threat. This time, however, the operator, here. operator in hand. Actually not holding the, the close angle either. It's a chance that maybe why you will catch Navera off guard. And they're slowly creeping towards that A site as well. You can see it just slowly, slowly building towards eight. Four players leading this way. So, again, Alt's going to probably find one, I believe. Yeah, and okay, probably around the back. And they're actually going to just lean in towards B instantly. Spike's on the way as well. They've got at least two players watching towards the other side. Navera is good for it, though. B 
patience pays off. I use down. Now we look towards what this B side is going to be. Shin's them out here with this Viper's pit. Completely covering sight. They have to fight back towards A side. Screams actually peeled away, but there's still two members here, XMS and Nuzera, to lock down A site. So aware. So aware of the possibility that someone's going to try and maybe slip through that. Another ult invested here. Plenty to play with for Carmine Corp as well. The next play is Scream does go down, and now maybe some problems here. Counter all comes in. This is so messy, Mike. What on earth is going on in this? <laughs> Another round where Viper's Pits are going to overlap here, and that's just Shin standing his ground once more. We'll deal with another member of FPX. Only two left to find. No stink bites for you, Chun. A paranoia to work with. But it's a mess in there on the free cam. Yeah, this is. They're bad. jumping in with shorties. Yeah, it's just ridiculous now. And actually, what? TZH is obscene with this, but now has to go above and beyond. It's not going to happen. Garline Corp somehow weather that storm that was going on in B. This game is bizarre, Mike. I've not seen a game like this in a while. Be it Lotus, be it the way FPX are play, playing, be it Garline Corp, I do not know. But, Mike, this is something else. I mean, I'm ready for the second half. Let's yeah. <laughs> see where FPX cook up in the second half here on the defense, because uh, I'm definitely here for it. Yeah, you and me both, and I think uh, just checking back in on this. Uh, yeah, this was lovely to watch. I mean, there's a world there. Th th I think there's like three or four shorties running around in both oh, five pits there. XMS the one to find value from it. <laughs> See the, the laughs on their faces after that final round. I mean, 8-4, to four, a respectable scoreline coming in, but I've got to say, Carmine Corp really started to carve away a little bit of that safety net towards After the end of this After that timeout, it just felt very comfortable for them. Yeah, it absolutely did. And, well, I'm sure the desk will be smug after what they've just seen happening on the uh, first half here. Let's hand it back to them. I tell you what, that last round looked like a few high school parties I used to have. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think you're a little crazy over there. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a wild one. That was... That was awesome. Yeah, Honestly, was. I, I am I am I am over the moon with what we just <laughs> well, saw, Josh. Both of those teams were really closely matched up until the final four rounds, but I think I feel like FBX could have done a lot more with their game plan overall. They didn't really put an emphasis towards controlling that A space. They just allowed Carmen Core to have it most of the time. However, in round five, that was one of the instances where they actually did go there. So I want to showcase, because it's our first time seeing Lotus, how important this area is to fight for. So with the Viper Wall, you know, you you have seen them in previous rounds sneaking up behind it, but here they were able to get a couple of picks and they actually opened the rotating door, pitted onto the site and allowed for a really difficult retake that Carmen Core yeah. couldn't handle. And I wanted to see them do that more because the couple of times that they went towards eight, they won. Yeah, it's very true. And I think, Bren, you know, now looking forward into this, there are clear things that FPX can take away as they are going to switch sides here. It's very clear, and, and I want to get your thoughts. Like, how yeah. do you feel Lotus is playing out? Well, the comps are very interesting as well. And individually, you know, we're seeing Sky being played, which I didn't expect. But the reason I think it makes sense now after watching that half is, you know, you see Scream, you see Ayang as well. If we, if we just take a look at these guys in terms of a head to head, the numbers themselves, you know, not entirely impressive. We're used to seeing Scream at the top of the scoreboard, but it's how they're using the Sky. You know, you get the extra information from the flashes and the dogs as well, the Trailblazer, to be able to, like you said, Josh, take that control of either A main, C main when you're on that defense side. I think Common Court towards the latter end of that half were very, very good at vacuuming up all that space that was being given yeah. to them for free. And you kind of need to see the same, honestly, from FPX, I think, when they swap sides now. Yeah, I actually was quite impressed with the way that Scream was playing because he was getting tons of information for yeah. his team. And he wasn't just playing it like a duelist. They actually had some pretty good plans, double facing on different high ground, low ground setups. Common Core are kind of ready here. Oh, right, well, let's go ahead and switch sides because I'm just glad that was a quick half because I want to jump right into this bad boy. So let's go ahead and send it back over to Pansy and Hypot. Yeah, 8-4 uh, on the half. Mike, let's kind of talk uh, top level then and work our way down if you don't mind here. Um, let's kind of touch base on our expectations now. We've seen the first half, it's a very small sample size to go off. Do we believe this is scrappy because of map, because of team, because of play style? What are we actually looking at here uh, overall when it comes to this? I think it's fair to kind of give credence to a lot of those factors, right? This yeah. is something that even actually after the first few rounds, you look at where the comfort levels come from for both teams. It, it didn't really feel sustainable, right? And initially, FBX were very, very focused towards B site. Obviously, then Shin finding a little bit of comfort. I don't know if that forced them to kind of innovate on the fly, but some of the rounds it didn't feel like there was initially a set plan. It felt heavily reliant on audibles, which, again, when we come back to that composition discussion, that's where actually the sky, the omen makes sense, right? You, you have that ability to 
find information later on. Obviously switch up the smokes as well. And uh, the turret was already disconnected, so... I'm not sure really here with Carmine Cora just looking to go through some early round protocols. You can see the ping coming through back towards A site. But already, A Yang is headed this direction. Yeah, it feels like considering how slippery FPX were playing on their side of things, they're very aware of the possibilities of fakes on this. A little bit of swing from Berlin, but doesn't I quite find much. I think that first flash was a little shallow here. It's not going to matter because yeah. they see ascending shots this way. Or are 30 they at 30 left. seconds? We're, uh, we're pulling so the plug on that A site here. Uh, and, and B is so unknown to them. I don't love this. They, well, they, they, they've just got to hope what they just get free entrance to see. I mean, you best play that Yu-Chan hasn't got a snake bite. He doesn't here. The poison orb's going to be up, but it's layered here with a nano swarm. This is 10 seconds. I hate this. This is so up in the air. He's going to hit all of these steps. Now, can he do anything with it? No. XMS might just save him, but again, time. That's his oh, own no, body the kill. So close, yet so far. And now into a post plant, decided by a couple of seconds. And now it feels like he's going to fall to pieces. Can anything else come from this round? A valiant attempt so far. DZH still looking to find value on this. Paranoia, smoke, and the TP gets towards sight, and the flash doesn't quite go through the wall, and Nevera happy to greet it. Just A Yang left to find here, and Clock already going to decide this one, but it's another round that definitely doesn't feel comfortable here, and I was just talking about some of the rounds where it doesn't feel like there's a plan initially. Carmine Court probing all over the map, at the 30 second mark. I mean, they're out rubble. They're outside a lobby. It's lucky. I, mean, th I think the timing is just ever so slightly off there for the Nano Swarm. Because it's the perfect setup, right? It's yeah. layered with that poison orb. You can see, I think Shin's down to sub five HP. Unfortunately, can't find that crucial kill on the spike mm. at under five seconds. I just hated what I saw. Yeah, that. I, 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 be honest. I don't want to know how many pages of the strap book look like that one. Yeah, that. I'd rather we, we don't depend on that. We play percentages if that's the game they want to play, but it worked out, so why am I worried? A uh, little bit of a buyback here from FPX. Going to see a couple of sheriffs. Maybe a marshal coming out. On the other side, Spectre's a little bit more value for it. A little more bang for the buck. And the spike being left by spawn. There's no massive intent being shown. Yes, there's that early presence over towards C and the punish on towards one, but beyond that, they're starting to look towards that B site, keeping that attention drawn throughout the map. Yeah, Spike not committed this time around, at least. Berlin forced very deep outside B. That's going to re-swing this, but XMS will punish. That should be B site. Pretty much firmly in control here of Carmine Corp. I don't think anything else could be going better for them right now. Spike going to go down. They're going to catch the rotation. And yeah, no one's going to find a window into this. The shorty. The sheriff, it's the sheriff to win out this time. But it's a quick, quick cleanup. I'm, I'm seeing no real threats at this point. Again, the spike now being planted. And there we go, just DZH. Trying to make a fire bit. Double digits now for Carmine Core. Actually, a big opportunity here if you look at Scream and XMS. And Scream one off the sea because XMS already on this lockdown. Could be very influential coming into this next round. Three Spectres, a rifle in the hands of Nevera. It's definitely doable. With the investment, this, uh, I'm seeing three light shields and a Spectre on the side of FPX. Now, that's not what you want at this scoreline coming into the third round. Looks like aggression might be the name of the game here, pushing up already. And Nevera, what? how does he even have a chance at that fight? Let alone win it. And Nevera's still fighting it out. Does find two this round. And already down to the 3v3 here. And the aggression not really stopping here. Berlin in the middle of no man's land. But he does have support beside him. So actually, coming out the better in this one. one I think elsewhere, yeah, you just saw the Vipers face off. XMS will find another kill, but it's why you to seal the deal. FBX happy to fight fire with fire over towards Rubble here. Nevera with a ridiculous opener, though. I think literally just first bullet on the back of that tracer after the paranoia connects. Same discussion to be had, though, coming into this round. Still a Spectre in the hands of Berlin. 
Lockdown and Seekers available for Carmine Court. And FBX, unfortunately, as good as broke if they lose this one. Time going to be offset with the one ways here. Going to at least invest a touch more utility early on to clear close, but as we've noted already, FPX is in quite deep this time. Not really willing to posture after this one. Nevera going to be able to clear this eventually. You can see already 3 1 1 leaning towards the seaside. Now going to go through middle. Does actually find players on the other side that is xms but he does have support as well scream on the back line gonna clean up two and fbx finding no value here yeah, you gotta respect the intention here to dig out follow up on those prowlers feeling as if it might be a solo lurk xms support from the back lines you should the, the eyes set on b yeah the lockdown invested seekers to layer behind this should be a pretty free b site for them Got to get themselves set up comfortably here. I mean, the snake bar going to slow things down, but we'll have to see where this re-challenge comes through from FPX. There's actually a 3v5 for them here. First fight will be clean as well. There was no trade. There was no one else behind it. That's not bad, though. That's a shot and a half. Yang doing very well here. Three stunning kills. And it screamed to try and save the day, but it's somehow down into the 1v1. How has it got here? Shin. Makes a bit of a meal of it. Another attempt at this one now. Jump peak gives away the game. Eight bullets to play with and Shin so prepared. But that was close to a tragedy, Mike. A Yang nearly pulled that off. Lucky Scream finally shuts him down on that one. A beautiful attempt at the retake onto B site here. Carmine Core with a massive investment. I think actually reading the scoreboard very well, knowing full well that this is the round that breaks the bank for FPX happy for this. I mean, this is over 30 seconds into the round, still with two set up. Anticipate that first shot was beautiful. Oh, mechanically. And the swing on the third was dirty as well. Yeah. I know if we talk, you know, expectations uh, when it comes to especially teams from China coming in, it's always been that mechanically, absolutely on the money. Always have been. It's always the depth that gets brought into question. If you look at prior games where, you know, tactical shooters especially, we know mechanically, these players were always up there. It was just, do they have the depth to keep going? And maybe again, we're starting to see that here early days, but this is still very early days for FPX being on the international stage, for example. Yeah, it is. And calling the time out here. Yeah, I'm seeing light shields already. I don't think this is going to be the round that they throw their investment into. Don't have the ultimates really to back it up either. You have to ride this out, almost concede the 12th round to Carmine Court. Looking as if they're going to get aggressive here either. A couple of bodies poised towards B, but I think actually it's going to be Yu Chun just to invest the wall, get some control outside A. Let's see how Carmine Core play this one out. Yep, again, could be petering out here for FPX. Already going to be a more than likely against 12. It's like a bit of a stack exploring over towards the C site, but the default should be tailor-made for this. This should be the perfect example of it. Let's see how well it works. Very complimentary angles here as well. Yeah, it's going to be shut down. Lovely. Got mine caught. Light work. Nice aiming, but again, light armor. So, or not even light armor, excuse me, no armor, and just sheriff. So, this was par for the course, and this will be 12 for Carmine Corp. And PX somewhat getting punished here, really. Once this side switch has happened, the game certainly running away from them. Yeah, I think it's why you, you can make the argument for maybe not having the finances to really enable some of this proactivity that certainly I was expecting in the second half. Again, dare I mention it again. <laughs> the close affair on that pistol round. <laughs> All but felt, uh, I'll be honest, fairly definitive in how this half started and how it's going to end. It's a mess. Deals with A Yang. One left now in the form of TZH. Yep. 30 and not going to have any say in this one. Looking like it might even be a prime gaming floor here for Carmine Corp. There actually haven't been as many of those as, as normal. It, it has still been scrappy. Oh, we talk about it being scrappy at first, yeah. yeah. And, and mechanically solid. But at this point, Carmine Corp just stretching their legs throughout this game. 
you would say, with this roster. Still unsure of the the level in which they could reach, even in a more traditional tournament format when it comes to Carmine Corp, but looking solid here. Unfazed so far, and you're absolutely right. The Prime Gaming, flawless coming through and putting them on 12 rounds as well. So this is looking like it could be wrapped up quite soon here, Mike. Yeah, and for FBX, I mean, even <laughs> now we come into round 18, round six on the half. Still no ultimate to play with. Don't really have the option for the lockdown. I mean, want to fight for an orb early here or try and find a kill. Maybe on towards Aeyang or Berlin. Carmine Core sitting on the Viper's Pit. One off the Seekers once again for Scream. So opportunity really to lock down, get themselves into a comfortable post plant. And might even just challenge right towards Yu Chun here. Seekers available now. Might look to pop on the back of this. Could do. Rotations are having to respect this. You've got three players, make it four now. Coming around, Shin actually takes a little step closer, but I want to see if there's intent. It's it looks fake. like it's a fake. Yeah. And they've drawn so much attention. I guess you have to respect it, but that's four players coming through. And Shin may put life on the line to try and really sell this tail. I mean, the other thing is, well, it's going to draw out further utility. Berlin might even invest this next Prowler to clear this out. But there's four members of FPX. Ooh, that one way could... Yeah, Tunnel visioned onto this Viper's bit right now. Uh, and I wonder what Shin can actually punish. Perfect look. Does get traded out in the end. But Viper's bit will fall. But again, they no got progress. stalled out on the A side yeah. with that one way smoke that came in. They could not progress. They were halted at the door. I mean, Shin's done a, a ton of work there to find the kill as well on top of that. I've got your Is this looking like a re hit towards C? Seeker's invested from Scream, yeah. I think he's going to try and follow up on this. Well, no one in spawn at least. Yu Chung going to try and stall out with the snake bite. It's just that sight cross that is going to be the danger run still. Okay, Smoke Dud did come around and they do have a little bit to work with, but time again is a problem. 10 seconds now. They are running low on the clock. XMS and Avera have no way into that site. Held at the door, and this could be another one for FPX. <laughs> Shot from Berlin as well. Just Nivera left standing. Obviously didn't commit to that TP earlier on. The clock will decide this one. I feel like FBX even initially looked very concerning to see four members staring off into that Viper's pit. Very hesitant to clear through. Didn't invest any further utility. I think it was just the flash from A Yang. But like you said, Carmine Court unable to find success or progress actually elsewhere on the map. Uh, I think Conscious actually is still going to have that Killjoy utility invested towards B site. That acted as enough of a threat actually to force them towards Rubble once again. Early investment here off the rip from Yu Chun. The Viper spit out towards Mound. That should close off that avenue for Carmine Court. And now actually, no ultimates available for them to work with. And the pendulum swings back in favor of FPX now. Everything but the TP for TZH available. TZH does have to be a little careful here. Does have the support from one by his side. Prowler going to go in, confirms at least one's attending, but there's plenty more behind that. Smoke just about committed in the horn going to go up and show a fair amount potentially. Actually doesn't. I mean, these one ways are just so oppressive yep. towards the lobby here. And that's why it's so crucial for Actually, them to reinforce TZH here, and Berlin just investing the ultimate to try and slow things down here. Carmine Corp looking to swing it's through, Shin's force. found it. It's brute force, Carmine Corp just want to get this one over and done with. A little bit of a trade out comes in, sure, but still, Spike still in hand, going to be leaning through towards that A site eventually, but this, again, is so brutal to play against. They just barreled through the smokes eventually, a flash or two just sent them into motion, and now we're down to two. If you noted it there, that it's going to be difficult for TZH to get much done other than, you know, finding two or three kills. Spacing not ideal there. Let's see the lockdown going to come through. Why are you going to wait this one out? But uh, definitely doesn't give them free access back onto the side. Tree still holdable here for Carmine Core, and XMS still split away from this. Why are you first in? Finding one, but one's not really going to be enough at this point. Need a little bit more damage. That's not bad. Trying to draw out one. Here's the steps. That should had an opportunity on the fight there. Nevera denies it. 
And it's a 13-6 map one here. Carmichael looking pretty solid, I've got to say, Mike. A little bit scrappy overall, the first look at Lotus. But long story short, in my mind, FPX really petering out on that second half. Yeah, definitely felt a little flat at, uh, at, at times there for FPX. But I think as well, taking this with a pinch of salt, obviously this is going to be a map that there isn't a lot of uh, preparation coming into. and. Uh, and on that front, I just feel like fundamentally, right, on a macro level, Carmichael just had a much better read. We are talking about the rotations on defense and uh, the number of times that actually screams able to, to uh, play advantage of that cooldown with a flash as well. Um, so, yeah, a difficult game for, for, to, to watch, really, for FBX, but, um, uh, you know, credit to you to Carmichael in that regard. Yeah, I, I do start to worry, though, if this was the attempt for, let's say, FPX to be able to play maybe the least experienced map for Carmichael to an extent, right, on international stages in, in that regard, this was probably one of their best attempts to really get under the skin, maybe you know, be a little Cast bit... them off guard correct. almost, yeah. Again, maybe have the, a more of an even playing ground in that matter. When you're coming to something like Haven and even Pearl then on the horizon, if it does go that far, I do start to worry, and maybe I'm a naysayer, maybe I'll be proven wrong and I'll be happy to see it. But I've got to say, for some of the standout things, look at the positives for FBX, some of the individual plays I'm seeing are highly exciting, a little buggy at times, but certainly very thrilling. Absolutely, I think that, that is the expectation, right? It's just when we talk about depth and... Um there's a number of times we're talking about them being hesitant, right? Not really having a set game plan initially. It's almost trying to play very reactive and Carmine Core demonstrate a lot of restraint in that regard. There was, there was no real overextensions in that. Scream actually keeping everybody in check and, and actually being kind of the puppet master in that regard of, of what Carmine Core definitely tried to achieve on their defensive half. Yeah, certainly not answering all of our questions yet for Carmine Core. It does with more, to be honest. It absolutely yeah. does. I think we'll certainly keep our eyes on it towards Haven, maybe a bit more telling as to how it looks with Scream in that IGL role, everything else that we had for them. Yeah. And FPX, it's still just learning as we go. Plenty more to be seen. Mike, any quick expectations? Do you think this could go the distance, or are you unsure now of seeing map one? Uh, I, I mean, I'm going to stay open-minded. Obviously, absolutely. if Haven comes back to a more you know, regulation map, so to say, that maybe there's a little more depth there in what they try and achieve. Mm. Uh, but I've got to be honest, that feels like screaming Nevera's backyard. It's uh, their stomping ground, historically. It certainly is, and that's something to look forward to, and it'll be coming up in just a moment's time. you wings.